The Adventurer's Log, 1.1105.20. Hi, I'm Bobby. I'm your host, and today we're going to be talking about Star Trek Discovery. Before we get to that, let's get to this day in tech history. On November 5th, 2007, Google introduces the Android platform, its mobile operating system for cell phones based on a modified version of the Linux operating system. The first Android-based phone would ship in September of 2008. So that's this day in tech history. So let's get on to our topic. So Star Trek Discovery Season 3 Episode 4 is titled Forget Me Not. Um, it opens with Dr. Culver walking around the ship with a, a monologue going on um, and doing medical exams of the crew. Um, and he, he, he points out that they're all in a state of shock state of loss, um, being thrown into the far future, and you know, anniversaries are not as prevalent anymore because everybody they know is in the past, and so everybody is in a in an odd state. Um, but where we left off in the last Discovery episode was the crew went to Earth figured out Starfleet is no longer there, the Federation is no longer there, um, and they found Adira, who has information to help them um, find the Federation. Come to find out that she is actually a human host of a symbiote, which has never been acknowledged of successfully working in the Star Trek uh, franchise. Um, but she she obviously knows of Discovery Systems, which for someone of that time period to know, that's not possible. Um, she can speak seven different languages and can cook a Bajoran Hasperat. I think I said that right. Sidebar. <coughs> They might might not say it, but they might. My theory is there's some connection to the Dax symbiote, as in Jadzia Dax or Ezri Dax from DS9. Um, whether or not that's true or whatever, we'll find out. But they decide that to get more help, or to, to get help and get more information, it's best for them to go to Trill. So they go to Trill. Once they get there, um, the the Trill homeworld people are, are excited that you know host is here um, and a symbiote's here, and you know they're like, we've been decimated because of the burn. We're we're so few on hosts. Um, please help us and. Um, Culver sent Michael down with Adira because uh, because of post-traumatic growth, which forces you to change how you navigate through life. And Michael's in the process of that, and Adira is about to start. And he feels that uh, she's that Michael's the best person to go with her because she has changed significantly in the last year. Um, she is such a rounded character now that she's almost nothing like who she was before, who is still struggling with who she is now. Um, but he feels that she's the best company for Adira to go down there. So she went down there. Um, and when they're down on the, on the Trill home world, um, the Trill are like, whoa, human, ho human holding a host or a symbiote that's it's never happened. It's never successfully happened in the last 2,000 years. This is ridiculous. You're an abomination. Let's take the symbiote back. And Michael's like, no, that's not happening. Um, we're not doing a forced removal. And one of the the caretakers or or the the, the religious people or whatever says, yeah, we're not going to take because that'll kill the, the symbiote and the host. It's not going to happen. 
So <coughs> they're basically told, you have to leave. And in the process, um, they get attacked, and Michael defends themselves, defends them, yeah, defends them, and another one, the let's just say the high priest, um, is like, I can help. Let's go to the caves, and we can talk with the symbiote. So while all that is happening, Saru is trying to figure out how to help the crew who are at a loss of who they were and who they are now in this new timeline. He seeks info, f- info from the ship computer, and the sphere data speaks up and gives him ideas. Um, so, back... My sequence is off, but whatever. Um, so, on the planet, Michael and Adir are in the cave with that one guy, and Adira gets in the water and to communi- commune with the, the symbiote and something goes wrong and she has to get in there and help um, and the other trill people show up and they're like no no but she convinces them to let her get, get in and help Adira and while while Adira is under <coughs> Uh, we find out that she grew up on a generation ship searching for the Federation headquarters. Um, and this is the first time since, really, since Enterprise that there's truly, truly, Star Trek Enterprise, truly, truly been a generation ship in use by humans because they've had warp technology before but now because of the burn they don't and so because of that um it's gonna be the the offspring of the people on the ship that will find the headquarters of the federation well as adira is on the ship again this is a flashback as adira is on the ship she find you know she's speaking with a trill who is her boyfriend, um, and he is joined with the tall symbiote. And um, he's learning from from the symbiote and, and the previous memories, and the ship gets a, gets destroyed or, or damaged, I, th- I think by a meteor or something, asteroid. And in the process, Gray, who is was her boyfriend, gets injured and is going to die and the medical drones decide to put the symbiote in Adira and Adira says I'll take I'll take the memories I will keep I'll keep them safe I'll do it and that's why she's a host and um, and after she relives all that with Michael there with her um, the previous hosts show up in her visions or whatever memory and they basically say we accept you tall accepted you we accepted you welcome to the to the circle and um so yeah th- that's 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 that and so they they get out of the, the water or the, or whatever it is and um um and Adira then speaks her names. And so she names off all the other hosts and then says, I'm Adira Tall. And so the, the Trill are, you know, like, thank you so much. Um, it will be our honor to, to, to mentor you through all of this and to, to teach you what, what, what we know. And Adira goes, I need to stay with Discovery. The, the trail is not for the symbiote's not just for the trail it's for everybody and I have a message that needs to be put out there and the best way to do that is with me with discovery and so the the head of the trail people goes we'll keep us surprised of your you know <laughs> what's all going on <laughs> and when y'all return when the federation returns 
we will speak of another joining. And Michael was like, we are so honored. So basically, when the Federation comes back and they can figure out how to do space travel again, the trio will join the Federation yet again. Um, <coughs> so while all this is happening, Saru is on the ship, and as I said a moment ago, he, he spoke with the computer, and what popped up was a voice that we haven't heard since one of the short tracks. Um, it's the sphere data. And the sphere data is slowly not taking over, but incorporating itself into discovery. And so that's the first time we really see it. So what Saru does is he gives the whole crew the night off, puts the ship in autopilot, and has dinner with all of his bridge crew. And so they're sitting there and they're talking and eating and everything. And and a haiku is brought up where the subject of a haiku is brought up. And so Tilly does her silly one and and um, uh, they they all coerce Detmer to speak a haiku. Well, in the process, what she is saying is gruesome and is extremely dark. And it's about Stamets and his blood and not being able to clean up the ship and all of that. And uh, Stamets kind of blows up at her, which is understandable. And um, he says, you know, my my injury was is, is not a joking matter. It's not for the dinner table. I was back at work an hour after da 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 da. And Detmer is like, I saved the crew. I f- I flew us to the or we flew us to the to the future. We saved the crew. Um, let's see what it, what did I write down here. I'm the pilot. We move it. It's not just you. And Tilly then goes. You guys think you have the market cornered on pain? All of our sacrifices, all of our experiences, and all of our work matters. And the only way we'll get through it, through this, is as a crew. So, to me, what I, what I think is happening, um, first I thought it was control, but I don't think it's control now. Mm, I don't think it's PTSD. I, th- I think it's, you know, this uh, post-traumatic growth that Culver mentioned. But what I think it really is for Detmer is that uh, the injury she sustained trying to, to land the discovery on that that planet in the second episode um, caused a breach of some sort to where in her implants to where um, that the sphere data is not necessarily taking her over but is possibly using her to grow and it's causing her to become unstable Um, and I, I think if that's what it is, we will definitely see more of that. Um, but I, I don't think it's I don't think for her it's PTSD. I think it's legitimately something is something is truly wrong with her. Whether it's this pr- post traumatic s- growth or it's sphere data or something else. Um, so it's it's interesting. Um, After everybody leaves the, the dinner, they w- we see Saru sitting there just, you know, head in his hand like, man, I screwed up. Can't believe I, you know, how am I going to get through this? And um, Tilly comes back and she apologizes and says, you know, this is this is more like my Thanksgivings at home. Uh, you know, this, this, was, this was nice, as odd as it was. And but she feels that he's doing a good job as being a leader because he's having to adapt to a situation that's never been experienced before. And she feels he's doing a fantastic job. And then Stamets comes back in and basically apologizes to Tilly. It was like, you're a fantastic you know, scientist and officer and I want to work with you on coming up with another 
type of spore drive jump interface. Um, because Saru said earlier in the episode, Stamets, you are very important, but if you're out of commission again, we'll be lost. You know, there's there's nothing we can do if our spore drive jump interface isn't working. So we need to figure out something. And so back to in the room um, with Tilly, Stamets, and Saru, um, Stamets basically says, okay, so what did you come up with this idea? And she's like, uh, well, what about um, dark matter? Or something like that. Um, they just agreed to work with each other to work on a new uh, form of interface for the spore drive jumps. Um, I don't remember exactly what. It was. I, th I think it was dark matter. Not dark matter. Um, is it subspace? Yeah, dark matter, I believe it is. Um, and after that, Detmer goes to Culver and says, I'm ready to talk about what's going on with me. And he asks her, are you okay? And she says, no. And that's hard for me to admit. And he goes, well, that's hard for anybody to admit, especially pilots who have a big duty to perform by keeping everybody safe. And he's like, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm ready to, I'm ready to, to talk. And so I think what's going to happen with Culver is, yes, he's going to do his medical duties, but I think he's going to be more of uh, a uh, counselor to the rest of the crew because Culver de technically died in a previous season and came back from pretty much the mycelial network and had to relearn who he is and so he's I feel he's the one who's cut out for dealing with all of this because he came back from nothing <laughs> um, <coughs> so as Culver and, and Detmer are, you know talking um, <coughs> a message comes out over the, the ship intercom says please you know all crew please come to the shuttle bay for a surprise and they just kind of look at each other and so they go off and what is happening in the shuttle bay is a buster keaton movie is played as a hologram and earlier when saru was you know looking for options for how to help the crew one of the things the sphere data brought up was a movie by buster keaton and so Culver, you know, he's impressed and tells Saru, you know, man, you did a good job. And Saru says, I have a theory. Or first he says, I can't take credit for that. Culver's like, what? And Saru says, <coughs> I have a theory. The sphere data was transferred here for us to protect it. <coughs> it lives on, dis on in discovery as we are now inextricab inextricably connected. Perhaps now it desires to protect us proving once again it truly is artificial intelligence and not just a smart computer so after that michael goes and sees adira and adira hands her data pad with coordinates for where the federation headquarters is and she pulls over a cello and plays a, a piece and michael's like "Ooh, that's pretty what is that and she's like Adira says, I think it's a lullaby that Simital's parents sang to him, but I'm not completely sure. The memories haven't fully come back yet, or haven't truly come through yet, so I think that's what it is. And Michael says, well, it'll, it'll come in time. Just be patient. So she leaves, and Adira is playing again, and then we hear and see Gray. And Gray goes, why? Why? Why, why didn't you tell her about me? And Adira goes, I don't think she could handle it. And Gray goes, I think she's the one person who could. So there's going to be that interaction later. And because basically Adira can see Gray all the time. No one else can, obviously, but Adira can. So that's going to be an interesting interaction through the rest of the season 
and the the lullaby that she's playing i think again i think this is going to go back to a connection to the dax symbiote um from ds9 whether it's ezra dax and whoever ezra ezra marries um and the kid that they raise i guess <laughs> i guess you'd call um is i, I think it's gonna be Senna. and so there's 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 I, I just i have a feeling there's a connection to the dax symbiote so so that's pretty much all i have um other than we saw the trailer for the next episode where they'll be at the federation headquarters and the Federation people haven't fully accepted them yet, and they're being sent on a mission of some sort, which maybe it'll be a mission to figure out what caused the burn, or maybe the Federation knows what caused the burn. They just don't have anybody who can go take care of it. So we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, that's all I have for y'all today. Um, so take a chance and explore something new or old, but new to you. Adventure is out there. Go find it. I'll see you all tomorrow.